Hello and welcome. You're watching another episode of Rappler Talk. Ako si Rambo Talabong, ang congressional reporter ng Rappler. At isa na naman tong episode kung saan makikipag-usap tayo sa mga newsmakers at mga taong mahalaga na nasa balita ngayon. For this episode, we're going to talk about the economy and the Philippines recovering from the lockdown. Bumabagsak na naman ang ating ekonomi at nagihirap na naman ang mga Pilipino. At nadadama ito ng mga tao sa House of Representatives, sa mga representante natin. Ngayong linggo lamang ng lunes, nag-file ang mga House Economists ng resolution na nagsasabi na kailangan ayusin ng gobyerno ang kanilang pag-manage ng lockdowns. At saka dapat daw mas involved ang Congress when it comes to planning the lockdowns and also the recovery of the Philippines. Kasama natin ang isa sa mga ranking economists dito sa programa ngayon sa Rappler Talk. I see House Economic Affairs Panel Chairwoman Sharon Garin, who also represents the Ambis OA party list. Congresswoman, welcome to the program. Good afternoon and thank you for having me here. Okay. Congresswoman, could you explain to our viewers now briefly what ano yung hinihingi do sa resolution yun ng Monday? And ang ganda ng inyong actual delivery, you and um, minor, Deputy Minority Leader Sela Kimbo, nagsalitang kayo delivering the speech and also you filed the resolution. Just explain to us briefly what it is about. From, from my side, uh, I just think that we have been in this pandemic for a year and a half already. And I, uh, considering we have had three ECQs, uh, three lockdowns, and, and we have learned that um, lockdown, I have learned that lockdowns are not the solutions to this. Because uh, it doesn't seem to work in a sense na we are totally sacrificing economy uh, for the health of the people. But uh, lockdown per se does not assure that we're all safe. So we have to find, we have to find a compromise or a, a different formula for us to recover from this economic downturn. Our lockdowns are so expensive. Um, according to NEDA, for example, billions of pesos for every two weeks of or a week of lockdown it costs it's costing the government money billions of pesos it's costing jobs and unemployment will rise and it will cost you know the nutrition and the hunger and uh, of, of our people will be another problem so parang parang ang gusto natin mangyari. We want everybody to be healthy and to also to be able to buy food and for for the for their families, so lockdowns for me is not is not the best uh, solution. I would say, it it is has not. I mean, three lockdowns, and so far we are number one uh, in our region in infections. Uh, luckily, we're one of the lowest in, in death rates. But it has to. We have to come to something uh, other than lockdowns. Hindi eto yung solution. Uh, so so our proposal was to review all over again. What has IATF done and what does it propose? And I think IATF has tried its best, no? I mean, it's very it's very complicated, the situation. So, sa amin, we proposed granular lockdowns, hindi yung buong community, kundi yung area na lang, bubbles, vaccination bubbles, and bakuna bubbles, as you would say, and business bubbles as well. So, yun yung mga solution, and also review the processes that goes on within the IATF. So, I think these are solutions that can be entertained by IATF, other than just, you know, let's go and lock down and, and uh, whenever there's a surge. Uh, yes, IATF has a new proposal, pero if you really read it, there's a new proposal of level one, two, three, four, five. But if you really read it, it's ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, MGCQ with a different name or a different number. So I think we should go beyond just lockdowns. That's what I think. Congresswoman, kung hindi lockdowns, ano yung pinop, ano yung propose, ano yung nakikita nyo? And I'm sure you're also looking at other countries. Ano yung alternatives na pwede natin gamitin instead of lockdowns? Kasi nabanggit yung nga rin and you've been saying this, parang ibang pangalan lang. It's the same monster with a different name. Lockdowns, MECQ, level 1, 2, 3, 4. But what about it in its mechanism should be changed? Okay. What's different now? We have vaccines. All this while, for one year, we've been saying, let's spend so much on vaccines. People don't want to get vaccines. We push people to get vaccines. Why? Because we 
we were saying that this would be the game changer, vaccines. True enough, we have vaccines now. Manila is probably at 50 to 60 percent. In a few more weeks, probably 60 to 70 percent. Uh, we'll probably get herd immunity already in Manila soon enough. But the game's still the same. The rules of the games are still the same. We go on lockdown whenever there's a surge. We don't allow people to freely go out. We don't allow churches. We don't allow movie theaters. Same thing. Nothing's different. But remember, we have vaccines. So our proposal is no more uh, um, one one proposal that we want to explore. It doesn't mean na uh, eto na yung tama ano. Na dapat wala ng quarantines. Uh, but since we have herd immunity uh, uh, immunity already, why don't we just put on lockdown yung barangay or yung street or yung set of households that has a very you know high surge, no areas lang. Pero the rest of the world should go on with the proper protocols, health protocols that they have to follow. Uh, for example, uh, so the rest of the country goes on, or the rest of Manila goes on, the malls go on, with, of course, masks on, with proper checking, uh, contact tracing. On the other hand, uh, halimbawa, kung ako, bakunado ako, dapat naman allowed na ako pang kupit ng buko. Pwede na akong munta ng dentist ko. Pwede na akong mag, uh, bumili ng groceries or pwede na akong other non-essential things. I should be able to do that because I'm vaccinated already and I won't be a burden to the social, uh, to the to the health uh, costs public uh, uh, that, this, that is spent by the government. So, uh, kung ako pwede na pumunta, dapat allowed, I have more freedom to go to my, let's say, hair salon, no? Uh, but, uh, at the same time, these hair salons should also have their own business uh, bubble or bakuna na rin na, na, na requirement. There should be a certain requirement, health requirements, on what are the practices that they should apply there. And siguro duhin na lahat na natatrabaho dyan, eh bakunado din. So that way, we also um, we also protect our people, no, the non-vaccinated, in in getting the the getting COVID-19. So kung meron tayong set of rules, very simple, simple enough, na pagbakunado ka, etong pwede mong gawin, give a premium naman sa sumunod sa utos ng gobyerno. Uh, and, and give a premium to what vaccine is supposed to do. Give us herd immunity. No? So why don't we use that now? Why are we ignoring the fact na there are more and more people vaccinated now and are safer? Uh, people are still compliant with uh, with social distancing, with uh, face masks, no, um, with all the protocols that is required. So, um, meron na, nagpa-follow na may mga tao, pero we're vaccinated already. Aren't we supposed to 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 uh, change also our rules because we finally got the vaccines? Congress mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Woman, napanggit niyo, what changed, of course, the vaccine? But then yung mga pro-lockdown naman, yung nagpapahigpit, ang sasabihin din nila, what changed? We also have the Delta variant now. What we're seeing sa other countries here is they're seeing that, okay, there's the Delta variant, and uh, there's also regulations specific for vaccinated people. So may premium talaga, di ba? And sa US nga, sinasabi nila that it's already a pandemic of the unvaccinated. So parang ang usapan doon, merong kaunting discrimination or more rules for people who are um, unvaccinated, but then there's the risk of also of also vaccinated people having the, the the being prone to being infected. Is this a is this a risk that we have to live through with now? Even if we're vaccinated, we can be uh, infected. But as you mentioned, it's important to reopen the economy for people's livelihoods. So that's my question: Is this risk something that we have to live through with, given we have Delta and vaccines at the same time? We need to live. With COVID-19, even if Delta is not here, I know the next letter will come. Delta S, Delta G, Delta whatever. It will come. Uh, it it evolves then. Eh? Um, so we have to learn how to live with the the um, virus. We need to coexist with COVID-19. And if our only plan is to lock down every time there's a surge, then 
livelihood and health won't go further in this country. Kailangan talaga, we have a long-term plan. And how do we face this COVID-19? Do we just plan to wait it out until there's no more letters for COVID-19? Wala hanggang zepa tayo, tsaka na lang tayo to ease on the quarantine. We need to have a plan for this country. And we owe it to our children, I would say. Na it is here to stay and we need to learn how to live with it. But if we have systems in place with a foresight of, you know, more than just the next surge, this is, I don't know, at least two, three years, I think this will still be dominant. Um, we need to have a uh, uh, set na the guidelines on how to live with this i don't i don't really i don't really believe that you need to sacrifice uh health in order for you to uh take care of the economy nor do you have to sacrifice economy to have a healthy community there is a way for us to coexist with covid-19 kung Kung vaccinated ka na, dapat there's a difference, no? So government is spending billions of pesos procuring 184 million doses of vaccines. For what? Because the idea is that we can go back to what is the norm, no? Pero basically, we have learned, hindi na babalik yung norm. So we have to readjust, recalibrate our norm na ngayon, near new normal. Meron talagang pagkakaiba yung vaccinated sa unvaccinated. And we have to take that into consideration as a factor in planning what is the new norm in our country. Hindi ko, uh, I'm not belittling the health or the lives of Filipinos, but we are also talking about lives when we stop people from working. I don't want to believe that it is more of a relief to die from hunger rather than COVID. They're both equally important. Kaya ako, I'm really uh, hoping that IATF, DOH, and the rest of our government, even Congress, to review our policies when it comes to economic activity. Kasi it's really costing us a lot. We won't recover from this if we keep on doing lockdowns every time there's another letter or there's another search that happens. So it is it is something that uh, that is we can manage by observing other countries that have successfully done it. That have successfully uh, found a formula to live with COVID-19. Yeah, um, hopefully we can review it in the house all over again. Uh, kung ano dapat gawin natin. And maybe form a more institutionalized uh, government arm that would address these issues and involve NEDA and the OF more, I would say. I'm going there next, um, Congresswoman, but I want to talk about the lockdown as a, as a mechanism of the government. Because from the start of the pandemic, we never really envisioned lockdowns to be something of a cop out for the government. Now, okay, taas ng cases, let's do a lockdown. It's really envisioned, and even health policy experts are saying this, lockdowns are there so that the government can catch up to the virus. Pagkaano tayo, mag-aayos tayo ng contact tracing, mag-aayos tayo ng ating hospitals para tumaas yung capacity. But ever since paulit-ulit yung lockdowns, parang hindi na nakahabol kasi gumawa ko ng story on contact tracers and they're severely undermanned. Our hospitals now severely undermanned. Our testing, kulang pa rin. It's not, ava- it's not ready- readily available. It's like 3,000 pesos to get one and not everybody can pay for that. Parang yeah. hindi na rin tayo nakahabol sa pandemia. So given, given this, Congresswoman, how are we going to live with this? And paano tayo mga kaangat dito? And nagkaroon na rin ng house briefing dito dati and you were one of the Congress congresspersons who actually said that we are severely failing. We are really lacking in this pandemic. Are you seeing movement? Because we can recommend for the government to do this, to do that. Pero parang hindi naman nila nagagawa, hindi tayo nakakahamol. So, given what we're seeing, how are we going to rise with this? Correct. You know, this is the beauty and bane of democracy. <laughs> we have to express our opinions, but it doesn't mean that everybody listens to you. True yeah. enough. I was watching a presentation the other day. Um, our, our, our cases 
um, before uh, was, di ba, from August 1 to September 12, it kept rising and rising. So, if you look at the graph, uh, parang ano yan eh, parang mountainside, no, paakit siya eh, no? It, it's gradually or even erratically going up yung cases natin, ano, paakit, ganun, parang ano yan, slanted yung yung line dyan eh. Pag mm-hmm. nilagyan mo, connect mo yung August 1, August 8, August 15, every week, paakit ng paakit yan. Unfortunately, our capacity has always been steady. Hindi siya commensurate yung increase ng capacity ng hospitals natin, ng health uh, facilities natin. On the increase, steady siya. Abutan na talaga, inabutan na, wala lampasan na ng slanted uh, line natin. Yung flat line ng capacity. True enough, tama ka dyan. The objective of a lockdown is not to to cut the infection. Well, maybe it will, no? Kasi less ang contact, no? But the main objective of a lockdown is for us to prepare for surge capacity. That has always been yung usapan since the start. That is why, uh, and but every lockdown we had, we didn't have that. So, so that is why we're saying in our resolution, let's reassess. Kasi... I think everybody naman agrees, even you know that, na, and everybody who listens here, na lockdowns is for us to catch up and to be able to manage any surge capacity. Kasi kung may capacity yan, kung may capacity tayo for any type of surge, we won't even be talking about lockdowns. Because we only do lockdowns kasi pumahaba na yung pila sa St. Luke's. Wala ng kwarto doon. Uh, sa PGH. Those are the reasons why we cannot, we, it is difficult for us to have surges. Kasi, kailangan we cater to those who need help, no? From, in our medical facilities. So, kailangan yata i-reassess natin the purpose, uh, what uh, what kind of uh, measures other than lockdowns we should do. And you are very, very correct. We need to uh, amp up our surge capacity. Congresswoman, punta tayo dito, sinasabi niyo rin na mahalagang kasama mga congresspersons ang Congress when it comes to planning. Yung existing mechanisms ba ngayon kulang? Because under bayanihan, di ba kailangan naman talaga ng government mag, magbigay sa inyo ng reports weekly pa nga to eh. At nagbibigay din kayo ng inyong mga recommendations sa kanila through your committees and pinapatawag niyo pa sila sa mga hearings. But in your resolution, you want more involvement in this. Ano ba yung kulang sa ngayon at ano yung dapat mangyari? Ay. Because IATF, uh, in nature of IATF, it's 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 like an ad hoc. Uh, it's not really an agency of government, but it's like a task force, no? Jo lain yung parang proper office, no? It's 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 a uh, it's a group na form for them to address something that's urgent and that's something very important, no? Uh, which is good, which is good. Pero. Um, because of the nature of, of IATF, uh, it was under Bayanihan 1 and it was formalized to be created under a presidential uh, declaration. No? So, um, if you think about it, wala naman, even during today, this month is budget season, we don't have any way of making them accountable for any budget or for any programs, plans or activities that they have because wala naman talagang office accountable na IATF to the budget eh, no? uh, it any budget for, for that would be uh, DOH spending on masks or kung ano man ang spending ng DSWD or kung ano man spending ng dole but there's no uh, office really na it's a matter of accountability um, if you talk about uh, Secretary Anyo, for example, just for an example, he's not really accountable in a sense that it's IATF, it's because he's Secretary of the ALG. Um, uh, si Duque, for example, it's not IATF that we can review the budget, but it's DOH. So there's, I think, a gap on on coordination because we're supposed to be the ones providing the budget for DOH so that DOH can follow what decisions uh, that the IATF makes. So parang may, may discord ng konti dyan. 
yes, we can call them and we can ask them for reports, but by the nature of COVID and what transpires uh, in our community, especially during lockdowns or ECQ or any kind of quarantine, medyo yung urgency niyan, medyo ibang klase yun eh. And, and you know how Congress works. We file, after a week, it's referred, and after a week of referral, it will be heard by the committee. A matter of three weeks power or more, then it can it can be discussed. And even after that, we have to do so many other things, like, you know, committee report, approval, and that. So if, if direct participation of Congress is there, uh, which I take pride on, because all these members of Congress are representatives of their own respective constituents. So, if they have concerns in constituents, then there can be a direct, uh, there can be somebody who can directly talk to IATF about what's happening in Bohol or what's happening in Cebu, what's happening in Iloco. So, I think it's a sound way of us being more uh, participative in our decision making and not just let. Uh, people from Metro Manila and uh, medical experts to discuss this because we have to see what's happening in the ground. Okay, two things, Congresswoman. First, on the accountability side, because budget pa rin naman is a Congress. Like, me, just make me understand how it's hard to to exact accountability. First of all, hindi ba ang chairman din ng IATF si President Duterte? And isn't it hard to make it make the president accountable since a lot of his allies are in Congress? And mahirap din ipinpoint sa kanya. Kasi siya yung chairman, pero hindi din siya pwedeng going accountable ng Congress. Kasi yeah. yun nga, yung allies. Ganun ba? Is, it, is that why it's so, also difficult? You know, uh, COVID is not... COVID is not political, eh. You know, I mean... When when you go down to your province as a congressman or even as a chief executive, when nakahita mo na sunud sunud ang nawamatay sa isang pamilya, or these people haven't been allowed to get out of their own sitios, I don't think the, any politician, whether congressman, mayor, I know, that's beyond politics already. Politics let that happen in 2022. Pero ito ibang usapan naman to eh. If, if, let's say, I don't know, if, if let's say a province is, oh, didn't vote for, for President Duterte, which many at, at the start, no? I don't think the president would decide na, ah, yeah, mo lang sila. No, let COVID run free in that province. I don't think that's, that's something that the president would do. I, I don't think he ever did that because this is, the, this is a, this is a the health crisis. Politics can wait. Uh, um, accountability. What I mean is, and decision making. Because if uh, mag distribution tayo ng 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 assistance, kung meron tayong uh, control on the on the occupancy of the restaurants or any business establishments, workforce yung lang pwedeng pumasok, uh, ilang jeep yung pwedeng magbiyahe. It's IATF that decides there. Uh, para ang implementing arm na lang would be the agencies. So, the responsibility of deciding is actually in IATF at the end. But we cannot call them on that as uh, based on their budget because hindi naman sila yung nagkukulit ng budget. Eh. It's the agency. So, I think, I think it would be more effective if there's more participation from different aspects of the government. Uh, hence, including legislative, what's the harm? No, if you have more voices there that can express the problems of their respective areas on the health and economics. This is my next question, now, Congresswoman. Ano yung itsura nitong your ambition in a joint executive and legislative task force? Kasi meron ng IATF, alam natin yung kabinet ng gobyerno. Kabi-kabi umuupo sila kasama si President Duterte. So kung magkaroon man ng joint Executive Legislative. Ano yun? We're going to see congressmen in that round table every night as well sa mga address ni President Duterte. The IATF has different, ano eh, different arms eh. Meron siyang economic, may, meron data analytics, meron siyang health. I don't know what else. I'm not, uh, I'm not privy to all kung anong tawag nila. Iba yung mga pangalan. But there are groups there in charge of different topics. Mm-hmm. And in Congress, we have chairmen or experts 
in different fields, for example, if it's data analytics, for example, one of our best there would be Joey Salceda and Stella Kimbo. Why not have them there also? If we're talking about tourism, we have Saul Aragonis, who is chairman of tourism. Participation in the working committees. Hindi naman yung participation lang kung magpatawag yan si President. I think, I think because of the expertise of this chairman, also representatives, no? marami naman dyan, uh, would help. Helen Tan is very, she's a doctor, uh, and uh, she knows the topic very well. She's had several hearings on 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 COVID already. We also have Janet Garim, my sister-in-law, who's, who was a former secretary. Those those are aren't those inputs that could be valuable also. A different uh, in the working committees of of IATF. I think that would help a lot, and that would also help us in crafting laws. That means that because biglaan lang o kailangan natin ng vaccination law. Uh, that that would that would have been more effective kung meron na talagang taga kongreso or policy makers na are already participating in the working committees of IATF and that's what i'm asking na kung economics eh, why not my committee no or or committee ni Joyce and said uh, kung about transportation why not put Edgar Mercerimento there who's a chairman of the committee things like that Hindi naman exactly, you know, uh, those people or those committees. Pero I think uh, as legislative uh, arm of the government, I think the members of Congress would have uh, a different input and probably made, would make the decision making, the decisions that they arrive at even better. Mm-hmm. Itong resolution na final ni um, Congresswoman Kimbo, Congresswoman, Nagkaroon na ba kayo ng temperature check with your colleagues sa Congress? How did they receive this? Are they ready to back this? Do they want this to happen as well? Uh, that's the purpose of the hearing. Um, uh, we Many, many have expressed, but many we haven't consulted. Mm-hmm. So I cannot I cannot speak for the entire body. No? But okay. it is something also that I have derived from the numerous meetings I've had whether with IATF, DOH, or just among ourselves as uh, uh, in my committee and the community on economic affairs because of that. Sometimes it's also, you know, there's also frustration on the part of some Kongs on what's, especially since they're representing a certain province or a certain area. Uh, so, bakit ito hindi ginagawa? So, you know, why not just, you know, uh, shorten the procedure and have them participate in in the discussions in IATF. Since IATF, for example, in, let's say, in economics, I think they have private sector representatives there. They probably have economists as well. They probably have chambers. So why not have representation of the legislative? It's not unusual that there's uh, just more than the uh, cabinet members that's there. Uh, there's private groups and other 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 sectors that join the subcommittees of the IATF. Mm-hmm. Congressman, I'm going to my last question now. We've been talking about the importance of lockdowns and calculated lockdowns, and we're talking about Congress also because of how important it is for Congress, which represents the people, to represent the people to win um, consultations of the government and its decisions. Um, in this discussion, I remember that under this pandemic, Filipinos feel so disempowered since Lagi na lang naghihintay yung mga Pilipino kung ano mangyayari. Parang, okay, ano na, ano na ang ECQ ngayon? Ano na ang JCQ ngayon? May alert level 1, 2, 3, 4. But then Filipinos are also frustrated. And also Filipinos are going hungry. Filipinos are afraid. What would be your advice to them? Empower them to, to make them more participatory in this process, to make themselves feel more secure, more empowered, more safe moving forward. Kasi hindi rin klaro sa kanilang isip kung ano ba nangyayari. And if, if they want their inputs, heard by the gov- their government and their representatives what should they do now i think i think the social media also works huh? i mean even me I, I i observe social media and that's a very empowering just just be nice and uh not disrespectful but i think uh having your voices heard uh kahit social media kahit facebook account mo lang yan, i think it i uh, know it it triggers debate and it uh triggers interest and i think eventually it is heard no um other than that speak to your representatives to your mayors 
na kung ano yung you think or our our concerns or suggestions because we we do need that uh we've been doing the same thing over and over again uh um so i think we need to change our mentality on how to approach covid um i can't uh, uh even myself i get frustrations also because i shouldn't be as people assume that i should have a bigger voice though probably but doesn't mean that just because i'm louder doesn't mean that what my suggestion is followed no mm-hmm. pero uh we have to keep on going and that's democracy and i think we cannot give up on this country just because one suggestion we had was ignored ang um, and lastly lang i think we need to participate or to to i know to be disciplined in a sense that we follow the rules the oh or iatf would not uh tell you to wear a mask just because they want you no there are certain reasons there there every decision supposedly has a scientific backing on it no or data analytics behind it so kung kung sinabi na social distancing ka or wag ka muna pumunta sa area na to there has to be some reason it's not flimsy na may decision making so uh, i i do i do hope that people continue whether or not somebody's watching you to continue with the with the health protocols that we that uh, that uh, the, uh, the IATF uh, has imposed, and also I know that vaccine is a personal decision, and I would not force anybody to get the vaccine if they don't want to. But I would actually, as as uh, as per my experience, uh, vaccine works in my family. It works. In, in my own bubble of people it works, uh, it helps a lot. And it will not only help you, your friends, your family, but it will help the country as a whole. No? It will relieve them of some pressure and burden on the health services of the country. And that's what we need. We need to, we need to go over this huge problem that we have in vaccine is one of the biggest ticket that we have that can probably relieve us of this problem or uh, or live with this problem so uh, reach out to your congresswomen congressmen reach out to your mayors use social media follow rules and of course get vaccinated our woman sharon garin of the ambis oa party list and also the house economic affairs panel chairwoman thank you for speaking with us at rapper thank Talk. you Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. To our viewers, mga manonood ng Rapper Talk, maraming salamat sa pagsama sa amin. Ako si Rambo Talabong. Kung meron pa yung mga katanungan dito sa coverage na to, you can ask me. Tag me at Rambo Reports or Rappler at Rappler.com. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs>